Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to Lima Ultimate. It has been about three months since I've last played this game and some recent news has come out saying that Studio 397 will be producing a season pass for the rest of 2024 for this game. And first and foremost, the first part of that season pass will be releasing in only a couple of days here on July 23rd. And that will include Imola, the Lamborghini SC63, and the Peugeot, the 2024 Peugeot 9X8. Unfortunately, this is the one with the rear wing Godspeed RIP wingless Peugeot X 9X8. And part of this video is discussing the current state of this game and kind of my thoughts on the future where this is heading. We've seen that this game has had a lot of advertisement with the World of Dirt's Championship, which is great to see. But the numbers, unfortunately, are not telling a very good story. As you all know, I absolutely despise using Steam charts as an official record of sales and player numbers and all the rest of it, but it's the closest thing that we have to the official numbers. And that is, the game had an all-time peak of nearly 5,000 players back when it was first released in February. And ever since then, it has been falling down. So over the course of the month, it would go down about a thousand every month, and then we'd get to June, where we had a peak of about 2,000 players, because that was for the 24 hours of Lama. And then, back in July, we're back down to a peak of about a couple of thousand. So I want to confirm this game is still in early access. So there is the potential chance for like an official release at some point. Many people are claiming that a console release is just around the corner. May I remind you that Studio, Studio 397 has not released any game for a console yet. They've released R Factor 2 for PC, and that's been it. So. I would not get your hopes up yet for a console release. I would honestly, in my mind, if they released a console version of this game, that would be amazing, being able to play this on PlayStation. But I'm, I'm not getting my hopes up yet. So we've got the $33 game that six months after release is charging $12.00 for two hypercars of the current season and the eighth track I want to say that's in my mind that's not a hugely great look I went back to see what all I've missed in the couple of months that I've been off and we've I've missed about three or four performance update patches and the free BMW Hybrid V8 car being added to DLC that you can just buy for free. You know, you can just download, don't have to pay any money, good to go. I know the devs behind Studio 397 are working tirelessly. And in this time frame, I haven't heard any negative news about motorsport games as a whole, which in my mind is actually good because the more you can keep your parent company out of the headlines, the better it goes for you know developing the game that you're in. Just morale is a little bit better. I guess the point of this video is me kind of saying I'm a bit disappointed because I was getting the feeling that this game would have turned out a little bit differently. That we would have had some larger scale support. That we would have had a lot more content being added a little bit more regularly. That we wouldn't have to worry about season passes and whatnot. I mean, for instance, you guys know that I play a ton of Gran Turismo. 
and play a lot of Need for Speed Unbound, and both of them, fully released games, do have DLC you can buy. Grand Theft must have a little bit less, but have had numerous free updates. Of course, the scale of the operations for both EA, Polyphony, and Studio 397 could not be any more different. But it's just really interesting to see the difference between all these studios and their different levels of monetization and their different levels of updates. And for all the past five months or so that this game has been out, there's just been, like, performance patches, which has been good. It's been needed. It's an early access game, so it's really needing to get make sure this game is going to function correctly. But do you ever get the feeling that the game is just called early access so they the developers can get a game out the door as early as possible? And to just say, well, it's just an early access, we'll finish the game later. And then they just don't? With all the turmoil happening at Motorsport Games, I'm just really hoping that Studio 397 turns a corner and more sales come through or that these season passes are positively received. But if you take a look at Steam, all-time reviews is about 75% positive. And recent reviews are mixed. I think I saw it was like 68% or thereabouts. So with all that being said, it just doesn't seem like it's boating very well at the moment. The one thing that I will have to see is that Studio 397 is doing a fantastic job of being very open for communication. They're on Twitter. They're on the Steam News telling weekly here's what we're up to here's what we're doing this is what we're adding to the game this is what you guys can be looking forward to which is honestly a really refreshing take versus like ea or polyphony that are just like here's your monthly update here's what's in it enjoy i mean it's fine i guess but i would much rather them opening up the doors for a conversation and saying, hey, what are you guys doing? Like, what's, what can we be looking forward to? Are you guys working on any new projects or, you know, that kind of thing. But it's just, I don't know, it's just really interesting. It's really different having that level of openness. But as you guys can tell, I'm just really not doing all that well right now. And I think this has kind of just been part of why I haven't played this game in three, four months, is that it takes forever to set up. You have to sit through a formation lap. I mean, you can skip it, but you still have to sit in line. It's incredibly challenging. The car's just not turning. And I do admit that these are all settings I could probably be changing. And I've already been going through and changing all sorts of settings in this to get this right. And it's still incredibly challenging. I know driving an actual racing car is not an easy task. Still not turning, I guess. But... The difference between this game and, for instance, like Gran Turismo 7, where you can just set up a lobby, get your settings right, get a car right, do some extensive tuning of said car. Unbelievable. But there again, th this is coming from the developers of R Factor 2, who are much more of the PC mindset where every single item has to be tuned and configured and... All right, this is just pathetic. So that all being said, I want to open up the conversation to you guys and ask, what are your all thoughts of the idea of the season pass? In my mind, as... I'm not going to say scummy, but as weird as the monetization is to have 
four $12 packs on a $33 early access game. I understand th Studio 397 is in desperate need of funding, and with everything going on at Motorsport Games, they need every little help that they can get. But let me know if you guys are still playing it, or if you guys like that idea of the monetization that they've got going on, or would you rather have that you can just buy each new hypercar for $3, or buy a new track for $5. Again, let me all know in the comment section down below. If you've enjoyed this content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope this game does not go the way of this race, where it's just... A struggle from start to beginning until it has an unceremonious exit. So again, Studio 397, I hope that you guys continue working on this game. I hope that you guys continue uh, updating it and continue patches and everything here. Uh, maybe even a console release one day. I think that would be a huge way to open up this game to a lot of players. So. Again, let me all know what you guys are thinking in the comment section down below. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.